this is the MCQ video on electronic measurement and instrumentation. We have already uploaded all the important topics on electronic measurement and instrumentation and there is a separate playlist created for it. So uh, if you are interested in studying the topics, please do refer that playlist. Okay. So in this video, we are going to see uh, the MCQ questions, the important, the most important questions from electronic measurement and instrumentation. So this video I'm uh, doing specially for uh, the preparation of examinations uh, like Bark, Stryfendry Trainee Examination, Keltron Engineer Examination and also ISRO Technical Assistant Examination. Okay. So the first question is the questions you'll be seeing on the board. Okay. What is the difference between an ammeter and a voltmeter? Okay. So the very basic difference is that ammeter is used for measuring of current and voltmeter is used for measuring of voltage. And other than that, ammeter is a low resistance uh, indicating instrument whereas voltmeter is a high resistance one. So the voltmeter has more resistance whereas ammeter is low resistance okay so why uh, it is like that we'll see in the next questions okay so the basic difference is ammeter is used for measuring of current whereas voltmeter is used for measuring of voltage now this ammeter is having low resistance and the voltmeter is having high resistance okay so these are the very basic things you should be knowing this at least okay anyway we have done separate videos on these uh, two topics okay now second question is second question why an ammeter should be of very low resistance okay so the next question is actually a detailed version of the first question why we are keeping very low resistance for ammeter so ammeter it is actually when uh, when we want to ammeter is used for measuring current right so when we want to measure the current we are going to connect an ammeter in series with a circuit uh, which we are interested in uh, measuring the current okay so we will be connecting the ammeter in series with the circuit carrying the current for measurement purpose now this ammeter must be of very low resistance so that the voltage drop across this ammeter and the power absorbed by the ammeter should be low as possible okay so consider that uh, this is your load or something now this is your ammeter so we are going to connect the ammeter in series with the the circuit or whatever it will be connected in series okay this series connection is adopted for placing of ammeters so that the power absorbed uh, by the ammeter and also the voltage drop across ammeter should be very low and the resistance also is taken as very low okay low resistance we'll be taking so two things you should be knowing ammeter is connected always in series they are having low resistance so that the the current drop across uh, sorry the voltage drop across and the power drop across this ammeter should be as less as possible so that it should be able to measure the current accurately okay so that is the reason next question third question why a voltmeter should be of very high resistance now the other question that is the question regarding to the voltmeter now why we are taking the voltmeter in the first question we have discussed that a meter is having less resistance voltmeter is having high resistance now why we are taking or are we keeping the voltmeter's resistance high okay so voltmeter in opposite to the ammeter it is connected in parallel with the circuit across which we want to measure the voltage okay and it should be of high resistance so that the current flowing through the voltmeter and the power absorbed from the circuit should be minimum okay so if you see the arrangement of a voltmeter consider that this is your circuit which you are interested in measuring the voltage you'll be placing the voltmeter like this okay so so that you know that the current will be getting splitted across the parallel connection okay so when uh, we are connecting the voltmeter like this the current flowing through the voltmeter will be less as possible and the power absorbed again will be less so this is the placement of a voltmeter voltmeter will be having high resistance and the current now we know that when there is a parallel connection like this there is a circuit here there is a voltmeter here and if this branch resistance is very high means the current flowing through it will be very less right normal concept or the very basic thing here the resistance is very high this branch resistance is comparatively less so through which branch will be the current flowing more 
through this branch and through this branch the current flowing will be very less and the power consumption or power absorbed will be also very less okay so this is our principle so that's why we are keeping voltmeter for measurement in as parallel across the circuit and also the resistance we are keeping as high as possible okay so that is the answer for the third question next question Next question is how an ammeter can be changed to a voltmeter. Okay, so now consider that you have an ammeter here which you are connecting in series with a circuit. So this is a circuit. Okay, now in order to change this ammeter to a voltmeter, we are going to connect a high resistance in series with this ammeter. Okay, so in series with this we are going to connect a high resistance. So an ammeter or a low range can be converted to, into a voltmeter by connecting a high resistance in series. Okay. Now, when we are connecting a resistance in series, provided that the current flowing through uh, this combination, series combination, should be in the range of, there is a measurable range of this ammeter. Okay. So this is how, that is by connecting a high resistance uh, in series with the ammeter, we can convert an ammeter to a voltmeter. Okay, next question. That is the fifth question. The question is asking what happens when an ammeter is connected across a circuit. Okay, so we have seen that an ammeter is connected in series with a circuit which we are interested in measuring the current. Now what will happen in reverse of it, we are going to take a circuit like this. And going to connect an ammeter in parallel. Okay, so we know that ammeter is having very low resistance, right? So what will happen when an ammeter is connected in parallel? In this combination, this branch is having very less resistance. This branch is having comparatively more resistance because ammeters are low resistance devices, right? So when such a combination is created or when an ammeter is placed in parallel or an across a circuit maximum current will be actually flowing through this ammeter and the ammeter may get destroyed the coil will get burned and the ammeter wire may get melted away and this ammeter will get destroyed okay so we are always keeping the ammeter in series okay next question What happens when a voltmeter is connected in series with a circuit? The other question, okay. So, if a voltmeter is connected in series with a circuit, the circuit resistance will become too large, okay. So, the other thing will happen. See, this circuit, we are going to connect a voltmeter in series. So, the voltmeter we are connecting in series, we know that the voltmeter is having high resistance. So, when this voltmeter is connected with a circuit in series means the total resistance now it is getting added up in series combination we know that if this is having resistance r1 this is having resistance r2 total r equivalent will be r1 plus r2 right so the total resistance will be very high and due to this result due to a uh, due to this as a drawback very small current will be actually flowing through it very less value of current will be actually flowing through this combination or this voltmeter okay so anyway the voltage will be almost same but the current will get dropped okay so this is one drawback this is why we are not connecting the voltmeter in series the total resistance of the circuit will be very high okay next question next question is what is vom okay vom is we call it as bohm it is volt ohm milliammeter it is actually another name of a multimeter okay so i hope that you have all heard of the term multimeter volt ohm milliammeter it can measure voltage resistance and current okay it's another name of multimeter okay next question next question is actually asking what is a multimeter 
Now multimeter, I, I hope that you have used multimeter in, in your labs, whether you are studying for diploma or uh, any other branch. Mostly in uh, all labs, we have multimeters, right? So this multimeters, it is having a function switch, which can be adjusted to measure voltage, then resistance and also current. Okay, so that is why it is called volt ohm milliameter or ampere volt ohm. You can call it by two names actually. AVO that is ampere volt ohm or VOM that is volt ohm milliameter. Okay, so that is a multimeter. Next question. Next question is indicate the various quantities that can be measured with a multimeter. That is what all things we can measure with the help of a multimeter. Multimeter can be used to measure the current AC as well as DC. Both values we can measure. Then voltage AC as well as DC and resistance. Okay. So it can be also uh, used for measuring uh, the other values like with, the, with an external circuit. Uh, we can measure inductance, capacitance. Everything can be measured, okay. In some addition, if you are making some additions to this uh, circuit, we can also measure inductance, capacitance, all those things, okay. Mainly, we can measure voltage, resistance and current, okay. Next question. Next question is, where LCR meter is used? Now, LCR meters are actually used for measuring L stands for inductance, C stands for capacitance and R stands for resistance. So these three parameters can be or these three quantities can be measured directly with the LCR meter. Okay, so that is application or a use of LCR meter. Next question. What is a Q meter? Q meter is actually standing for, Q is standing for quality factor or Q factor. So the Q meter is an instrument designed to measure Q factor of a coil as well as it is used for measurement of electrical properties of coils and capacitors. Okay, then the other electrical properties can be also measured. Mainly it can be used for measuring of quality factor or Q factor. Okay, and that's why it is have, having the name Q meter. Okay. Next question. On what principle does a Q meter operate? Okay, so we have actually seen the properties or uh, we have studied regarding the RLC circuit. So in that uh, video, we have studied regarding the resonance, quality factor and everything. So this Q meter is actually working on that principle. Okay, so the Q meter operate on the principle of series resonance. And under the resonant conditions, the circuit voltage across a capacitor is equal to the applied voltage times of the Q factor of the circuit. Okay. So we have seen regarding the RLC circuit. And there is a condition for this circuit called resonance condition. And under the resonance condition, we have seen there is a resonance peak and that top point of the resonance peak we call it as the peak value and we can measure with the help of this peak point we can measure the Q factor that is a quality factor. So the Q meter is actually working based on the principle of the resonance of a RLC circuit. Okay, So the principle of operation if somebody is asking you it is a resonance. Okay. Next question. What are the different parameters that can be measured using a Q meter? So a Q meter can be used for measuring the Q factor, then inductance, effective resistance, self, capacitance, bandwidth and capacitance. Okay, so we can measure what all things Q factor you can measure, inductance, then bandwidth, then capacitance. We have just seen now that it is working under the principle of the resonance of a 
R L C circuit, right? So we can measure all the values, resistance. We can measure, we can measure the bandwidth, the Q factor. Then R L C values, all these things we can measure with the help of a Q meter. Okay. Next question. So if you are not familiarized uh, with the concept of the R L C circuit, the resonance condition, and all, there is a video in uh, the network playlist for uh, studying this uh, topic okay so you can uh, get a clear idea regarding the resonance in rlc circuit everything in that video okay i'll be sharing the link of that video in description so that you can refer it what is the q factor of a coil okay so the q factor of a coil is the ratio of inductive reactance that is xl to the effective resistance it is called the q factor okay there is again another definition for q factor uh, in terms of the uh, bandwidth and all okay it is actually given by the ratio of the maximum the peak frequency of the curve uh, f or omega we generally represent in angular frequency omega to bandwidth okay so this is again a definition of quality factor so this uh, expressions in detail i have explained in that uh, video okay so you can actually find it in that video the detailed equation and everything i have explained so, it can also be called as uh, the ratio of inductive reactance to effective resistance of the coil. It is the Q factor of a coil. Okay. So, based on this Q factor only the Q meter is working. Okay. So, these are the questions I have included in this video. So, in this video we have seen the questions from electronic measurement and instrumentation. So, I am really hoping that the questions were useful. If yes, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, share it with your friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.